In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use architectural visualization Photoshop action to instantly transform images that are containing architecture and create some very special effects such as the one you can see here. This is an image of the Colosseum in Rome. It has been transformed using the action. You can see the result here. This result also has a part of the original image. This is the original image. I must mention that this action works and will produce similar results whether you are using a photo which was shot during the day or during the night. Now, this is the folder that has been created by the action. It contains all the other elements. There are multiple layers inside. And you will have vast customization possibilities. You are able to reveal a part of the original image, such as what you are seeing in the bottom part of the scene. This is combined with the original image partially. And this is how the result looks without any part of the original image. It is uh, something like a hologram on a dark background and uh, all the parts of the architecture are augmented using uh, some special effects, the light effects that you can see. Okay, besides all the colors that you of course can change, there are many color adjustment layers, you can uh, also use the adjustment layers to create the blueprint on a white background. This is very simple actually, using the color controls. You can specify a certain color, you may disable some elements and See the result, something like this, depending on what you want to achieve. Now, in order to use the action and create these, these uh, results, you will need to load the assets of the action and these are of course the action itself but also the brushes that the action uses and the patterns it is uh, it is a single pattern it is the dotted pattern in the background the dotted grid pattern okay and in order to do this, you will need to load the action from the actions panel. So make sure you have the window actions panel opened. I'm going to click here and load actions and load the architectural visualization Photoshop action. Okay. Then I am going to load the brushes 
required by the action I'm going to click on the brush tool click here and then here and load brushes and load the architectural visualization brushes and for the last step in the last step I'm going to load the patterns you can do it simply by clicking on the gradient tool or the paint bucket tool that you have here I selected the paint bucket tool by clicking and holding and instead of a foreground I'm going to choose pattern and clicking here and here load patterns and I select the patterns okay this is it now for the final step you will have to use an image of course I'm going to delete this folder with everything that the action has previously produced and I'm going to leave an original image this is basically a JPG image that you open in Photoshop you have a locked background layer it is this layer the action requires this layer and you will have to make sure that the image mode is RGB with 8 bits per channel and the image size is something large you can use any, any image size that you want but the larger the image the more details it will contain I personally prefer an image somewhere around 3000 to 5000 pixels in in width or long edge okay the resolution 72 pixels per inch now you have everything ready to run the action remember that after you loaded the action you can open an image and just run the action I'm going to click on play and we have this effect that is prompting us to select a value is the minimum effect you will have to select a value between 1 and usually 3 pixels now I'm using Photoshop CC 2017 I can select a value here like 1.5 you will probably be able to select a value of 1, 2 or 3 if you are using an older version of Photoshop such as uh, CS5 and you won't have this uh, this uh, select button here it doesn't matter anyway now a smaller value will uh, will result in uh, less amount of details less amount of light elements and uh, might uh, actually even produce an error at some point in the future course of the action and if you get an error you will have to select to input here a larger value if you get an error with 1.5 or 2 you will probably need to input the number 3 this is because uh, during the course of the action there will be some uh, edges which will be selected and if the edges are not significant 
the action will produce an error. Let's say a value of 2.5 here, or maybe even 3. And click OK, the action continues. It creates all the elements. And we have obtained the result. We can see the resulting high quality. Okay. When the action is done, we are left with this folder, this group of layers selected with the black mask and we have a brush which is selected by default a round brush it allows us to directly brush this mask to reveal the unaltered scene now if i brush using this brush that the action has provided and the color the white color with this black mask selected, I will be able to reveal a part of the original image. So I can brush something like this directly. And I am getting the result that you can see here. I am revealing a part of the original image, but I also have the light effect, light effects present. These are not hidden. Okay, you will notice that there are many layers here. There is background one, background two layer, gradient fill. The gradient fill layer, which is selected by default, has these colors. It fades to the black that is on the upper area of the scene and we have this color on the, the bottom area we can of course change it or put black or whatever we we want for our effect of course you can use a single color or the entire scene that you can adjust and input whatever you want or you might want to use the black background color okay then you will notice that there is a pattern fill layer is this pattern in the background and also there is a folder called scene effects this folder is closed you can open it and there are multiple layers here you will notice there is a scene effect one folder and a scene effect two brush mask to reveal it the scene effect 2 is a something like this you can see it here i brushed it is more pixelated and it is lacking detail you can use it for some areas of outside the focus center of your image you can disable it of course there is the scene one effect the scene intensify color fill for the scene okay you might be interested in changing the colors you can do this by adjusting some of the adjustment layers and blending options. 
for example, the scene effect one will have a color fill layer that you can adjust and input something different. You may of course put white to to remove all color. Okay, let's say you want to use something blue for the color. There is also a scene intensify layer that has an outer glow property and you can change its color too to whatever you want. I'm going to undo the changes I made. Okay. For the scene effect 2 that you see here, I can, uh, to better view it, I can make something else. I can I'm going to delete this brush mask and leave it black so it hides everything. And I'm going to brush over this part of the Colosseum. And you can see something like this pixelated design that you can change by adjusting the two filters here the mosaic filter and you can put a larger number of pixels and have the effect looking more minimalistic and you can also use the filter gallery with the glowing edges filter to make some adjustments Here. I usually prefer the image without the scene effects. I'm referring to this particular image. Okay. Now you also have the light elements, one, two, and the plexus element that you can adjust. These pixels are the light element one. These vertical light lines are the element two. And you have the plexus, which is positioned in the top area of your scene to cover the sky. You can adjust their colors by using these blending options that the layers have. Color overlay, an uh, outer glow you can put a, a color that matches your scene as you you have uh, customized it before okay this is similar for the the other light elements And for the plexus element 2, which comes by default with a blue color, and it has an adjustment layer located here that you can, of course, put the color you want.
Okay, there is also a color enhance layer located in this folder, which is covered by the mask that you have to brush to reveal it. The color enhance layer by brushing this mask will intensify the colors of your scene. So look just by brushing what change has been made or this area maybe this area so the colors are boosted I must mention that this effect to enhance the colors will work even if you have the unaltered scene the original image present and you can brush somewhere over it and you will create a very sophisticated effect now look at the colors it is both natural and augmented okay and for the last step i'm going to show you how to create a blueprint on the white background this is very easy we have these adjustment layers in the overall color controls an overall hue saturation i enable it and double click here to edit colorize we are colorizing the entire layer and adding a single color maybe a blue and i am enabling the invert layer i am disabling all the light elements and i am also disabling the original image you may want to remove any other color for the background except the black background because with the invert layer you will have the white background and we have this effect that we can of course adjust it even more we have a levels adjustment layer i enable it and you can adjust the value of the levels to adjust how the scene will look as a blueprint You may have any color you want, you may even have black color. And using the overall image, the overall levels, you can basically adjust the contrast of this layer. Okay, so basically this is it and thank you very much for watching my tutorial.